Hello, it's Scott Manley here and today we're going to follow the further adventures of Tony Probe. When we last left him, he was stranded on the roof of the vehicle assembly building, left without power, and so we have to send a rescue mission to him. This is one of the default vehicles that is uh, equipped with the game, or it comes with the game. It is a rocket-powered VTOL, and it's perfect for these short hops. So we can send a pilot up there to uh, tend to our brave, um, well, robot, I guess. Once we got it, we can uh, send him out to uh, try some missions. So the first thing that was obvious was to build a space probe and put him into space. So we built a little uh, space rocket, a couple of stages, and, you know, basically launched him towards the star. This is an ion thruster-powered system, and you see it has giant solar panels. Unfortunately, we ran out of fuel before we completed our orbital injection, and so it was down to the power of the ion drive to move us over into a safe orbit. But uh, did I mention that the ion drive isn't the most powerful uh, engine in the game? In fact, um, <laughs> unfortunately, this is what Tony found. And on entering the atmosphere, he was subjected to the forces of re-entry. Maybe we could make these things work as wings. No, I guess not. Um, okay, we're running out of time and we're running out of power. We have some battery power left to power this thing, but I don't know if that's going to help us so well. Wait until just the last minute and fire up our engines, and... Impact! Brilliant! Tony survives to fight another day, but... Well, I guess we're going to have to send someone up there to get him, because he has no power and no motive left, and uh, yeah, he is just a space probe with no legs. But that doesn't make him any less a hero. Let's, um, send one of the aircraft out there to him. Now, with the new aircraft with air intakes are pretty darn good. This is one of the standard um, vehicles, it's the Raven Spear. And you can see that uh, even even the basic one is doing over a kilometer per second at uh, 14 kilometers up. In the old days, that would be a lot harder to do. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we take them over the poles and the nice thing about the polar ice caps is because they're essentially frozen sea, we have some nice flat areas to land. and. You know, even an ex... Well, okay. Uh, I guess uh, I'm going to have to send a rescue mission for that plane as well. But while Tony is waiting, at least someone can keep him company this time. Oh, Tony, you're my favorite space probe. So anyway, getting him back, I build the smallest plane I possibly can. Using the smallest fuel tank, the smallest engine, and of course a couple of canards... Uh, this thing won't take off vertically because it doesn't have enough thrust, but if you fire it up and then edge it over, it will catch into the air and you'll be able to fly this thing around as long as you have fuel and battery power. Uh, it doesn't generate any power itself. I guess this rocket is too small to feature an alternator. But regardless, you know, you can fly and it, it works relatively well. So while I demonstrate the ability for this tiny, tiny plane to fly around, or this Tony Tony to plane to fly around, I think it's time to immortalize Tony in song. And so I present to you, Tony Probe. Tony Probe, Tony Probe, how far can you go all around the globe? Tony was a normal probe on the production line. Then someone messed things up and gave him his own mind. Tony probe, Tony probe, flying around the world, trying to get back home. Okay, enough of that nonsense. Now I need to land this thing, and without any landing gear, the way I do this is very carefully. Gotta be careful, try to get up, get up, get up, get up, get up! Oh, there! Oh, brilliant! What a beautiful landing, huh? Tony lives to fly another day. And uh, let me show you how that was supposed to look, uh, if I hadn't muffed it up. There we go. We are just gliding over the surface and unfortunately what happens is if you take too long to land you run out of power 
and without the power you can't control it. Now, uh, I managed to beat my record for the smallest plane by uh, taking off horizontally. And this, there we go, without a pod, the center of gravity moves so far back that it basically flies upwards on its own. Kind of beautiful, isn't it, huh? Uh, It doesn't do so good for landing because as it starts to reverse, it begins to slip sideways. And even although it has loads of lift, uh, it's, (laughs) it's sliding sideways and landing doesn't work so well. Here we go, 75 meters per second. You can see we're sliding down almost 80 meters per second sideways, but we only lose one wing. Is that not beautiful? (laughs) Look, it loops around, does another loop, bleeding off velocity as it does so. Now we get a bit of a stall and hopefully we can bring it down and no. But hey, what a beautiful flight that was nonetheless. Now... Let us try a solar-powered vehicle. Look at this. We boosted up to speed, and now we're in the air with all these uh, solar cells on the wings. We can bring our ion engine up to power. We have to be careful. We can't run it at 100% power, but we can get relatively good amounts of it. Um, And that tiny amount of thrust is enough to keep it moving sideways, but without the wings, it doesn't quite stay up. You can see me adjusting the, the, the well, adjusting the aerolons here to try and give me some level of control. But it just, the ion engine nearly serves to keep it flying a little longer. It's more a controlled descent towards the surface. But, uh, well, even with that one wing, we still are able, without using the... Well, we're using just a little bit of uh, the ion engine here. I guess we're running out of power. You can see it flickering. But we're just going to try and land it here. You can see that the surface speed is now like 7 meters per second. Look at that, huh? No stalling on this thing. Beautiful. Hey? Eh? <laughs> now, if we want to actually get sustained flight, we need this to add extra wings. Of course, extra wings gives us some nice oscillations. It looks like a fish swimming into the sky. Now, 8 kilometers up. Fire up the solar cell, try and get, or fire up the iron engine and see if we can get sustained flight here. And indeed, with a decent amount of uh, trim and very sensitive adjustments, we can get this to stay in the air. The extra wings is really what makes it make a difference. So uh, landing, on the other hand, becomes a little harder because this thing just doesn't want to uh, bleed off the velocity. Uh, the other one you saw that we could get it down at uh, 8 meters per second or whatever. This one, if you turn it at that angle, it just goes upwards. And so despite my best efforts, despite 10 minutes of trying to bleed off the velocity, I can't get the velocity low enough. And so we end up kind of zipping across the surface, gliding forever. I'm sure Tony would keep it flying forever, but I have to go places. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.